Today, I show you the best graphics settings in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 for the highest performance at the best visual quality. As always, in this video I provide you with actual performance benchmarks, as well as side-by-side -side comparisons of every single graphics setting in BO6 to find the best possible balance between high FPS and good visibility. Now, the systems that I used to benchmark Black Ops 6 are shown on screen right now, and all the tests have been performed using the latest version of Windows 11 at a resolution of 1440p and using both the latest NVIDIA and AMD drivers. Now, I'd like to begin with the age-old question of whether or not you should enable resizable bar. Now, rebar is not officially supported in BO6 on the NVIDIA driver, but when we use the NVIDIA Profile Inspector to force rebar on, then we can see that we are, on the averages, not really gaining anything. However, more crucially, we are significantly losing on the 1% lows, meaning that we are introducing a lot of stuttering into our game. So if you're also on this kind of system, then my clear recommendation would be to not force rebar in Black Ops 6. On the other hand, on my old AMD system, you can see that I'm gaining roughly 10%, both on the averages as well as on the 1% lows. So for these types of systems, my recommendation would be to enable rebar. Next, let's have a look at a few gaming-related Windows settings, and here the results were a bit varied. First of all, we have hardware-accelerated GPU scheduling, which traditionally you would always want to have disabled. However, on my Intel and Nvidia system, I actually saw quite a bit of a boost in performance. Vice versa, on the AMD system, I saw somewhat of a drop in the 1% lows. So this is kind of one of these settings that you probably want to actually test for yourself and see whether it increases performance on your system or not. On the other hand, for game mode, which traditionally I would always have recommended to leave on, I didn't find a measurable impact on performance on Black Ops 6. Hopping into the game, I would always recommend you to use the display mode full screen exclusive to get the least amount of input lag and potentially also the best performance. However, from my measurement, I really couldn't tell any difference between the performance of full screen exclusive and full screen borderless. So if you want to be able to alt tap faster, then this is fine, but still for most people, I would recommend full screen exclusive. Select your primary monitor, your primary GPU. Don't select the integrated graphics here, select your GPU and let the game automatically select the screen refresh rate. Display mode, you want to match what your monitor's resolution is, so for me this is 1440p. Aspect ratio and display gamma you can leave on the default, and select the brightness according to your liking. In my case, I like this at a value of 55. Nvidia Reflex Low Latency actually has no effect on performance. Instead, this reduces input latency by providing a dynamic frame rate limiter. So it always limits your frames to be at the maximum possible bound in order to minimize the bottleneck between CPU and GPU. So you want to have this set to on if you are more GPU bottlenecked and on the other hand you want to set it to on plus boost if you're heavily CPU bottlenecked. The way you can test if you're either CPU or GPU bottlenecked is to go to benchmark and open the benchmarking tool run a benchmark and here you can actually see the number of how many times the game was CPU or GPU bottlenecked. The other settings down here are not really that important, just make sure to turn off VSync and make sure to not have a custom frame rate limiter here, especially if you have reflex low latency enabled. These other settings have no impact on gaming performance and if you have an HDR monitor of course you want to use HDR and on the other hand if you don't own an HDR monitor then you'll leave it disabled. Moving over to the Quality tab, where we first have the Render Resolution. Now this you always want to leave at 100%. If you do need more performance, then instead use one of the upscaling filters. Speaking of upscaling and sharpening, because there are so many different settings here, and because each of these actually have individual sub-settings, I am not going to be able to cover this for today's video, and instead I will produce a dedicated video for this topic. So just for today, let's talk about Fidelity FX Cast because this is also the setting that I would recommend most people to use here. And as you can see on screen, what this does is it really sharpens up the game quite significantly. Objects that are very far into the distance appear much sharper. And generally, it looks like all of the textures have higher texture resolution than what they actually have. I personally recommend a Fidelity FX Cast strength of 70, but this comes down to personal preference. Now, while this setting vastly improves visibility in BO6, it doesn't come with a huge impact on performance, which is why I highly recommend to have this enabled. 
NVIDIA DLSS frame generation I highly recommend to leave disabled because this setting, while it does boost the apparent performance of your game, actually introduces a lot of input latency and therefore I would not recommend to use this in a first-person shooter. The VRAM scale target traditionally used to be a very important setting in order to reduce stuttering in Call of Duty titles. But fortunately, Black Ops 6 is a super smooth gaming experience, at least on the two systems that I tested this on, and I really didn't have any issues with my 1% lows, so there isn't really much to tweak when it comes to this setting. Um, as you can see on my Intel system, I am getting basically the same performance on every single setting here. However, on my AMD system, I actually saw somewhat of a reduction when increasing this, which frankly doesn't make a lot of sense and maybe it's also down to sampling uncertainty, but from my experience, a value of 70 works plenty well. Now, an option that I highly would recommend to actually increase, because it does boost performance quite significantly, is variable rate shading. From my testing, it appears that it would reduce the texture resolution of textures that are not in the middle of your field of view. So in the middle of the screen, you usually have good texture resolution, even with this option enabled. However, if you look at the outside of your screen, textures appear to be less detailed. I should mention that I had to zoom in roughly 2 to 300% in order to even make out any differences. So because while playing you'll never notice the degradation in visual fidelity and because this strongly improves performance you should definitely enable this option. Now producing this video has been extremely time consuming, gathering all of the benchmarks, finding all the side by side comparisons. So if you enjoy the huge effort that I put into these FPS guides, then I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment down below for the algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, not only about Call of Duty, but also any other FPS game out there, then it would really make my day if you could subscribe to the channel. Moving on to details and textures, we can see that texture resolution naturally does have quite a significant impact on performance, especially the high preset. On the other hand, if we have a look at a visual comparison, we can see that the very low preset really makes the game look pretty trash. Frankly, I would not recommend anybody to use very low unless you really have to squeeze out the highest possible performance out of your system. Instead, I would recommend the low or normal preset for people with a low-end or high-end system respectively. Anisotropic filtering, I'm not quite sure why they flipped it around uh, in the option here, but this option traditionally I would have recommended to leave on high because it didn't really impact performance much. However, be careful, in Black Ops 6 I actually found significant reductions, sometimes also of the 1% lows, when increasing this option to normal or high. At the same time, when trying to look for visual differences, I really couldn't spot any, so if you know how this setting is supposed to affect the game, then please let me know in the comments down below, so I'd recommend to leave it on low. Depth of field has no measurable impact on performance and when we look at a side by side comparison we can see that this essentially is blurring the weapon when ADSing and frankly this mostly comes down to personal preference. Just be aware that in some instances you can actually introduce some stuttering once you ADS if you have this filter applied, especially if you're not on the most high end system. So generally speaking I would just leave this disabled. Next we have an interesting new setting, which in the options is actually called the nearby level of detail. However, this is not really what this does, because this affects the fidelity of pretty much any object in the game. Now you might be mistaken to think that you could just leave this on low and call it a day. However, I found a bunch of examples where leaving this on low would make the game look very bad. From this comparison, you can see that the train carriage has a very low polygon render count for the horns as well for these lights here. And unfortunately this option also reduces the quality of trees that are somewhat far away from the player. Now of course if you just want the highest possible performance you can leave this on low. However if you want the game to look somewhat good then I would still set this to high despite the high performance penalty. Particle resolution is a notorious setting for reducing your performance and because it only affects sort of the particle effects when something explodes it kind of increases the resolution of those particle effects you should definitely make sure to not increase this beyond very low. Bullet impact has no performance impact and if you want to enable it or not comes down to personal preference. Persistent effects has a measurable impact on performance, especially on the 1% lows and from this side by side comparison you can see that with this option enabled, explosions leave marks on more objects. This is a pretty useless option when it comes to a competitive game and therefore I leave it disabled. 
Moving on to Shader Quality, which at the very early launch of Modern Warfare 2019 actually affected the visuals of your weapons. However, this hasn't been the case for very long now and as you can see from this comparison, the weapon look exactly the same irrespective of the shader quality level. On the other hand, shader quality massively tanks performance. We're talking about 10% at least on the medium preset and 20% or more on the high preset. And the primary effect of shader quality is that shadows that are far away from the object that cast them actually are more blurred and more realistic. Besides nicer looking shadows, you'll also get more reflections on shiny objects. And finally, you can see that metal objects look much more realistic. Um, basically on low they look very plasticky, for instance the metal of the shutters look very bad on low and also glass reflect much better what is actually in the room. So on this shallow angle you can very nicely see that it kind of reflects kind of orange tones, whereas on low the glass looks just like a generic glassy surface. Now frankly I love the way that shader quality looks on the high presets, but because of the criminally high reduction in performance you should absolutely, if you want to get the best performance, not increase shader quality beyond anything else than low. Finally, I found absolutely no performance impact for on-demand texture streaming and local texture streaming quality and I also didn't find any difference in terms of the visual quality of the game and therefore my recommendation is to leave this on minimal and on the low setting. Moving to shadow quality, for which you can see the performance impact on the right hand side. This has always been a performance hog and you can see it still holds through for Black Ops 6. Anything beyond normal is really a bit too much of a performance degradation, especially in terms of the 1% lows. And I really wouldn't go beyond that. So as you can see, the very low and the low shadows are highly pixelated and frankly only the normal preset really results in decent looking shadows. Now anything beyond that, honestly I don't really see too much of a difference visually and because they have such high performance impacts I wouldn't go there anyways. But frankly if you want your game to look like it has been released now and not 10 years ago then I'd probably actually play at the shadow resolution normal. However of course if you need to get the highest possible performance out of Black Ops 6 then just leaving this on very low does the job. Screen Space Shadows introduces additional dynamic shadows on your player character and on your gun. So as you can see from this comparison, on the glove of the player you can see the shadow of the rifle and at the same time the rifle actually shadows itself, so the sun isn't unrealistically illuminating the left hand side of the barrel. While the low preset doesn't really come with too high of a performance impact, I still would argue that the visual upgrade isn't worth even the slight reduction in FPS. Occlusion and Screen Space Lightning is essentially just ambient occlusion and it's kind of funny because on the right hand side here they try to make an example for this, um, but honestly you don't see any differences and I also didn't find any differences when going into the game. However, in the benchmark I actually did see a reduction in performance, so definitely leave this setting turned off. Screen Space Reflection, you can see a very nice example on the right hand side here, thank you very much Treyarch. And from my testing this reduces performance by roughly 1-2%. to However, again I don't really feel like we need to have nicer looking reflections, so I leave it turned off. From my testing, static reflection quality significantly affects especially the 1% lows, which is why my recommendation is clearly to set this to low. And finally coming to the environment section, which historically has always more affected the single player campaign of Call of Duty rather than the multiplayer. Now this is pretty much the case for Tessellation, I couldn't find any differences in game where this actually made a difference while measuring a slight reduction in performance. Volumetric quality does have quite a significant impact on performance, especially the high preset, which tanks performance by about 30 FPS on my systems and from a visual comparison you can see that this actually introduces more fog to the scene, which does look definitely nice, especially if you're playing the single player campaign, however in a multiplayer game you'll definitely want to leave this disabled. The deferred physics quality once again measurably reduces performance, but again I wasn't able to find any good examples of how this affects the visuals, so my recommendation is to leave this disabled as well. Weather grid volumes has neither effect on the performance nor on the visual quality of the game. And finally we can see slight reductions in performance when increasing the water quality preset, however once again it's so hard to find an example where this is actually applicable, so I'm not sure if this once again only applies to the single player campaign. Now once you have set up your graphics tab, what you want to do is to go back to the display tab and then you want to click on restart shader preloading and hit restart. 
Now, you'll have to restart the game for these shaders to actually reload, but this is actually a super important step that you definitely don't want to skip to get the smoothest and most performant game possible. Finally, under the View tab, we find the Field of View, for which you can see the performance of my two systems on screen right now. Traditionally, we would usually see sort of a U-shaped form here, with low as well as high field of views yielding higher performance, because at high field of view, the game would very aggressively stop rendering certain objects. However, this doesn't seem to be the case any longer for Black Ops 6, and here we only see a reduction in performance when we increase FOV. So just keep this in mind, if you want to have the highest possible performance, then maybe playing at a field of view of 120 isn't the ideal solution. So maybe something around 105 or 110 FOV is a good sweet spot between performance while still seeing your enemies at your periphery. ADS field of view you want to have on affected, the weapon field of view on white, put third person field of view to 90, vehicle field of view to white, and disable the world and weapon motion blur, Set the first and third person camera movement to least, and if you want, you can enable inverted flashbangs. Now, besides the in game settings, there's actually also a lot of new things that we can tweak in the configuration file of Call of Duty Black Ops 6, but not everything has a measurable impact on performance, and some settings actually really degrade visual fidelity of Black Ops 6. And this will be the topic of the next video. So, if you're interested in that, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss when I finish producing that video. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.